Welcome to this edition of Bonehead of the Week. Boy, we have some great things that we're going to do today. But the mm-hmm. one thing I want to do, there's um, even there there is even uh, one of the candidates. There has been an update in the last three minutes. Oh, has there really? So you're mm-hmm. keeping an eye on the news. You're yeah. keeping an eye on the news. Um, well, let's let's go to the candidates here and let's not waste a lot of time. We have Governor Greg Abbott, uh, Elon Musk, and Charlie Kirk. Um, obviously, there's a lot of um, <laughs> fanfare, I guess you'd say. I don't know. I don't know. I, I guess maybe that you'd say over some of these. Elon Musk just can't stop. Uh, we can't stop talking about this moron. He bought 9% of the company uh, of Twitter. Then he wants to buy Twitter. Mark Cuban this morning is just cl- uh, claiming he's doing a pump and dump, which is my right, belief. Right. Did he um, say that? I thought he said that yesterday, the day before. He, But yes, essentially, he... he um, yeah, he's well, saying he's Cuban driving up the price. He's driving. Yeah, he's up driving the price. the price. Same thing he did with Tesla, and it, all trying to do it before the SEC is like, "Wait, what the fuck's going on?" You know. Right. Right. Exactly. Well, and 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 I mean, honestly, I said this yesterday. That the, the fact that the fact that Elon Musk was like, "Take it or leave it," is it's not a serious thing. Like when you're talking about right. forty three billion dollars, a yeah. take it or leave or take it or leave it offer is not going to be viewed seriously in any boardroom across right. this country. Well, I mean, here's the thing. The things that I've seen on the right, they're like, oh, okay. Again, let's go back to the group of people on the right who say, I'm getting off Twitter because it's suppressing my my voice. It, it's silencing me. Uh, I, I need to have my freedom of speech and, and they're restricting my, my, my First Amendment right, which is, none of that is true, okay? Uh, you could say dumb shit. You could say stupid shit. You could say a bunch of rather just terrible, dumb takes, right? Uh, you could be bigoted, whatever. Now you can say those things. That doesn't remove any sort of consequence from the action that you took, right? So if that is in regards to your job, employer, employees, friends, family, whatever, they push you aside and say, we don't want to be affiliated with you. That's not Twitter's fault. That is your fault. You did that. You did that to yourself. You dragged yourself through the mud and the shit, and everything, and then now that you're all a mess, you're like, wait, wait, this is not fair, what's going on? You did it, you did it to yourself, okay? Just understand that, there there are consequences to the actions you take, okay? It's consequence culture, it's not cancel culture. Now, these people on the right, who claim these things, and they're, I'm going to Gab, and I'm going to Getter, and I'm going to Choose Social, (laughs) I'm going to Parler, and I'm going to Rumble, and I'm going to whatever the other fucking dumb websites that they go to, where they say that the the freedom of speech is unrestricted, and we can do whatever they want, hoorah, we can be as racist and terrible as we want. Here's the thing, those people, 100% of the time, are on Twitter, stay on Twitter, despite the fact that they go, there's going to be a mass exodus. They said it for all of these different apps, right? All of the different apps. And what ends up being, they come back to shit on Twitter, on Twitter, because they can't get away. They want Twitter so badly, despite the fact that they're saying they're going to leave in a mass exodus, and they're going to go to these these right-wing First Amendment pro well, It's because patriot. they need it. It's because they right, need no, it, right? they need it. They well, need I, mean, it. I mean, look at Marjorie Taylor Greene. She's a perfect case study. She loses her personal account, but she still... Fu- and she goes out and she's like, I was banned from Twitter. Like, she wears it as a badge, and she's still tweeting on her, her fucking right. congressional account. Yeah. Like, I mean, she she's, tweets she's, every fucking day on her congressional right. account. Exactly. So she yeah. didn't leave Twitter and she didn't get kicked off Twitter. I mean, she probably should be. There's good case right. that she should be. But it, it's her congressional account. And she knew that. Paul Gozar the same way. He would cheat, tweet crazy shit from his congressional Personal. account because yeah. he, well, from his congressional, because he knew that they wouldn't fucking ban right. that account. Right. So, which is, which is, uh, you know, obviously is, uh, you know, I, I don't know. There's a lot of like uh, what's allowed and, you know, right, in terms of right. like a government official and things of that, like, I, I think there should be some sort of like, hey, this tweet is fucking uh, homophobic. Well, I, I mean, I or mean, transphobic, right. you know, like Marjorie Taylor Greene had video last like two weeks that was that was pushing transphobic messaging. And uh, and Twitter was like, this is fine. Well, I don't I don't think I don't think Twitter has to perma ban. No, no, no. Uh, an, an official account like like a representative. I think they can just they can they can hide tweets if they need to hide yeah. them. If they're and, I, they and should you know definitely what? flag. You know what they could do as well is they could just suspend them from having any uh any activity to where it's just like an archive. Like they can't right. tweet. They can't like, post. You could just right. read it. Right. You can just read the archive. Right. right. So speaking speaking of um uh, people who were who have been suspended from Twitter. Charlie Kirk is also on the list. I don't mm. want to spend a lot of time on this guy because I really want to move forward to Greg Abbott and and our d- dishonorable mention today. Yeah. Um, 
But Charlie Kirk, he said tall buildings are liberal. Is that is that gonna you? <laughs> he <laughs> he's like, oh, the taller the building, the more liberal it is. Pretty what I, said, I believe what he was saying is he was saying black people live in tall buildings, and that's why tall buildings are bad. White people live in nice suburban houses with big yards, and that's why they're good. That's what yeah, my thought. Yeah, was. I mean, yes, he could very well make the case of like, uh, oh, you're in a city and certain right. demographic is stacked on each other and buildings and whatnot. I mean, like his also his other argument was like, if you're conservative, you're out in the land, your hands are you're you're right. sowing the seeds and you're working the, the land. This is a, okay. This is really hold on. Where did Charlie Kirk grow up? Let's look at this. Ready? <laughs> Let's look at this. I, I would it, imagine he grew up with the dirt under his fingernails. I mean, and sure. he grew up in Arlington Heights, Illinois, oh, which is really? a suburb of Chicago. Oh, really? Okay? Do you know where Arlington Heights, Illinois is? Yeah, you yeah, probably yeah, know yeah, yeah. It. It's over by Palatine. It's it's like a little south. Uh, you're south. you're saying it's like a rural farming where they actually grow food and the only food they eat is the food they uh, grow in their no, fields no no okay no no okay. no 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 it's uh so it, they're chicago and then it's it's uh it's right it's north, a suburb right yeah northwest yeah yeah so it's over by like you know schaumburg and schaumburg it, it, palatine hoffman estates like all these places are cookie cutter homes they're all right. like uh, you go right. in. You, you mean you mean big houses with nice big yards mm -hmm. with a lot of white people. Yeah, you know, a lot there. of cul-de-sacs, <laughs> a lot of cul-de-sacs, right? right? They don't want people right. coming in. And again, right. people know anything about cul-de-sacs, exactly. you'll know the history on them. Uh, but that's the type of town that he grew up in. And also, if you look at those the town that he grew up in, like the highest building, you're going to have commercial buildings there. I mean, they're not going to be skyscrapers, but they're going to be 20, 30 like, floors, right? So for this guy, also a, a big fan of Trump, and right. I'm pretty sure he said Trump built tremendous right. or magnificent buildings, out. right? Mm -hmm. So Well, we went through this yesterday, and really, honestly, right. he's like, Trump, I, I said this yesterday, like, if Charlie Kirk would have left the podium and Donald Trump came up right after him, he would be like, I build the tallest, best buildings ever, they're, mo they're the glorious departments, the best, right. the most fantastic, I mean, he would brag about how tall his buildings are, right? Yeah. And, they, and the people in the crowd... Would clap the oh, same yeah. way they, they just clap up, for how little, buildings little, are liberal. Yeah, but exactly. the thing is, and the reason why, here's why I said this yesterday. The reason why those people clap so hard in the audience and they would clap for Trump is because they knew what Charlie was saying. Charlie was saying, we want more white neighborhoods with nice suburbia white neighborhoods with right. less with less people of color right. in them. And we want the people of color to be in the big, tall, high rises, quote unquote, right. ghettos, because right, that, right. that's that's what they were clapping. Right. I mean, you remember Trump during the during the campaign was saying like, oh, they're going to ruin you know, whoever, you know, they are. We'll just use it very loosely is anyone who's not white is going to ruin the suburbs. Right. You know, the Cory Bookers, right, as Trump exactly. said, mm -hmm. uh, Cory uh, um, Bookers. Yeah, it's those, like, those black dudes. Right. Right. Like, <laughs> oh it, it, you know, his you couldn't his, be uh, more, more. Right. More, his, the dog right. whistle was pretty clear. Oh, yeah. That was there. Right. Uh, but yeah, it's the same type of stuff like Trump saying like, oh, suburbs are going to be ruined because they're going to be like, it, no, no, that's not right. how it goes. Look or suburban housewife. He would say right. suburban housewife. Like, yeah. Do, do you realize that most of suburbia, they're not housewives. They work because they have to afford right. to live there. Right. Like, what are you fucking talking about? There's not that many households in this country anymore with one income. They're just not. Right. It, it, it's not a thing that exists as much. Speaking of households and married couples and you know, um, rather they uh, get along or they arouse each other. Um, our our alpha cuck of the week is Ben Shapiro. Uh, <laughs> like that photo I found. <laughs> oh my god, that's fantastic! It actually looks uh, like it actually looks like him having the conversation with his wife about what a WAP is and what yeah. a DAP is. Right. Like, so you're telling me um, <laughs> it's not supposed to be dry. <laughs> Oh my god. So as everyone knows, um and if you if you want, you can go to our YouTube channel. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, we put up a video of me and Gabe breaking down uh Ben Shapiro and why he was punked basically by a student. Mm -hmm. Um should we play this video one yeah, more time? Let's just play I really it. think just we should give play it to this. people, give context because here's the thing. Even even if they already know the context, the video is still funny. Right, it's well and it's like what? It's like 11 seconds long. Yeah, yeah. I mean this yeah. is this is like it's, this listen, is no it's brainer. probably longer than Shapiro in bed. Oh, oh, okay. So let's let's play the video here. This is what happened. He was at some kind of a fascist uh, talking thing event, and uh, a student got handed the microphone. And listen to what the student says. Uh, be be very very clear on what the student says. We'll play it once. 
dysphoria, yeah. which is I literally term that said, I use throughout the speech, not gender identity. You sound like disorder, a bozo, bro. And you get no pussy, dysphoria. and you can't even make your wife wet, bro. So what's good? <laughs> it's funny I think, every single I think, time. Every I think we should have renamed uh, this one to Bozo of the Week. You know? Bozo of the Week? That could Bozo be. Bozo of the Week. But the reason why he's the Alpha Cuck of the Week is not no, necessarily no, I know, I know. not necessarily why he got Alpha Cuck of the Week here, because he did get kind of get cucked here. Right. But the reason why is because Ben Shapiro kind of told on himself a couple years ago when he was totally offended, totally offended by Cardi B's song mm-hmm. uh, WAP, which stands for Wet Ass Pussy, for mm-hmm. those who don't know, um, because that's important because he claimed that there is no such thing as a wet ass pussy. That Cardi B was uh, operating in fiction because his wife has told him that that doesn't exist, um, that she doesn't get uh, aroused like that. And her vagina does not do that thing. And he kind of told on himself that. Right. He dries up the room when he walks in. What, what, did, you, what did you think? What did, what I did said you Ben Shapiro sucks the moisture out of the yeah, room right. right when that's he walks right. in. Right, right when just he like walks Ben in. Shapiro opens doors like. Boom. And everyone, everyone just like is like so. Like right. just bone like, and just like leather skin. <laughs> uh, so that's why that's why Ben Shapiro is the Alpha Cuck of the Week. So like congratulations to Ben Shapiro on on gaining yeah. our Alpha. This is Cuck. the first time, by the way. This is the first time he's been on the show. Really? Actually, mm-hmm. on Bonehead yeah. of the Week. On wow. Bonehead of the Week. Well, I, congratulations I, I to Ben. Give yeah. him a round of applause. Way to go! Uh, yeah, that's fantastic. So if you guys want to go watch that clip, um, go to our YouTube channel and you'll find the uh, Ben Shapiro uh, clip of me and. Uh, uh, Gabe talking about uh, wop and wet ass pussy. It's fantastic. It's fan- yeah. and and you get to see Gabe's impersonation of um, <laughs> Ben Shapiro, which is also fantastic. Um, but this moves me to our dishonorable mention, which I really want to focus on. Our bone of the week winner. Uh, we'll give him his due, but I really want to focus on this story because this mm. is the story of the day. Uh, Mark Meadows, is this the one that you're saying? There's some updates in the last. No, 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 no. The one that I'm referring to is uh, Elon Musk. Oh, okay. So yeah. w- let's let's move. Let's go to that verse. Let's give us the Elon Musk news here, and then we'll go to uh, Mark Meadows, Chip Roy, and um, uh, uh, Senator Mike Lee all sexting each other, seditiously right. sexting each other. So what's the Elon Musk news? So they responded. I just saw that uh, that Twitter Twitter actually, responded. Twitter responded, and uh-huh. um, yeah, it's just like. Okay, so basically, uh, the the AP News article says Twitter adopts a poison pill defense in Musk takeover bid. Uh, Twitter said Friday that its board of directors has unanimously adopted a poison pill defense in response to a Tesla CEO, Elon Musk, proposal to buy the company and take it private. They said the move, formally called a limited duration shareholder rights plan, aims to enable its uh, investors to realize the full value of their investment by reducing the likelihood that any one person can gain control of the company without either paying shareholders a premium or giving the board more time. Poison pills are often used as defense against hostile takeovers, which happens all the time in companies where some person, you know, gets up majority and then, or has the majority stake within the the company and then tries to push out people or, or assign a new board of directors or executives um, under their own kind of direction. And says Twitter's plan would take effect if Musk's roughly 9% stake grows to 15% or more. Even then, Musk could still take over the company with a proxy vote by voting uh, out the current directors. Twitter said the plan doesn't prevent the board from engaging with parties or accepting an acquisition proposal if it's in the company's best interest. Uh, Twitter had revealed that a security filings Thursday that Musk offered to buy the company outright for more than $43 billion, saying the social media platform needs to be transformed as a private company in order to build trust with its users. I, I don't know if that's necessarily true, you know, but right. that's Musk's uh, idea. And it go, and then he's saying it's bullshit about, I believe in free speech. There is free speech on Twitter. You fuck. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, here's the thing is really, honestly, uh, Twitter's free speech on your free speech on Twitter only extends to how much, uh, Twitter is willing to let you do that. Right. Uh, exactly. You, you could, you could say ridiculous. You, you, you could post the most insane, vile, disgusting, bigoted, homophobic transphobic racist uh whatever you wanted to post you could as post long that. as they'll leave it there it's yeah it, yeah it's there. now if here's the take... thing now whether or not other people look at that and say this is fucked up and then report you and then twitter says uh yeah that's pretty messed up it violates our private company's terms of service 
that you agree to. You click the little box that says, I agree to the privacy right. policy, the terms of service. Yes, I want to create an account. There's community guidelines to make sure that it doesn't just fucking go into the craziness. So if other people report you or there's some sort of, uh, you know, like moderation aspect of it, that's on you because you posted something that, that was against the thing that you agree to. Right. Right. So don't well, get mad. And, and, don't get and mad at other is, people. If you want to post that racist shit, if you really want to post that racist shit on the internet, go start your own website. You can post it right. on there. Yeah. You can you can post it on i i hate free speech dot com or whatever you want. Right. Go buy go buy you a fucking website over at GoDaddy, and you can just start posting and posting and posting. You don't have the right to fucking for everyone to see your racism just because you right. want them to on Twitter's yeah. website. That's not how it works. Uh, thank you to MJ. She gave us a, a super chat here for the, the no wet ass pussy bozo. She said, Hey, and then uh, Tony, Tony, thank you for the super chat. And we have Gabby Woo! here with the super sticker. Yeah, thank you away, guys baby, for away. the super chat, the super stickers here on bonehead of the week. If you want to get in on the super chat, go subscribe uh, to the YouTube channel. You can do Super chat, but do do subscribe um, during the show. Um, so the the uh, remaining part here. So there was a video that was yesterday, uh, mm -hmm. later on Thursday during a non-stage interview at TED 2022 conference. He went on. Musk went on even broader. Having a public platform that is maximally trusted and broadly inclusive is extremely important to the future of civilization. Right. Musk revealed in a regulatory filings over recent weeks that he'd been buying Twitter shares in almost daily batches starting January 31st. Like, so this is not, again, for people this who, guy, this he didn't, guy he didn't is just right, like right. outright buy 9%. He was strategically buying stuff little in little like breadcrumb increments right. to get himself to a point because, you to know. Where he gave his, now the poison right. pill thing, you're saying what Facebook is doing. It sounds like what they're doing is making sure that I mean, a billionaire Twitter. can't, uh, yeah, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Twitter is, is making sure that a billionaire can't just come in and destroy their company. Right. They're it's putting a condition to say like, oh, if he gets over this percentage, then, you know, then this, you know, poison pill goes into effect. But that's the defense that they're making right now, which is like they want to prevent anyone because person. they see they see what he wants to. He wants to destroy. Right, right, Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Again, he's not like, wanting to save Twitter. He's wanting to destroy. It. Right, right, right. And so, you know, if it's like he really wanted to create something himself, I mean, here's here's the other thing. Like, obviously, like Elon Musk has created companies, but everyone's like, oh, Tesla, Tesla. He didn't start Tesla. No, he came in as an investor and then took it over. When he realized that people, the original two co-founders, uh, after it started gaining popularity, they weren't talking about him. They weren't mentioning him because it was he was just an investor. He wasn't the one behind the ideas. Right. It pissed and him he off. got and then he, you know, took him, he pushed him out. And well, uh, I, I, man, I get this all the time when I knock on Elon Musk on a clip or some shit. They're like, oh, he invented, the, he invented the electric car. I'm like, bullshit. This is a guy who's got a silver spoon from Blood Diamonds in South right. Africa. Mm -hmm. And 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 yes, is he smart? Is he does he know markets? Sure, whatever. He he might know it, but but you fucking incel people out there who thinks he's some kind of fucking self-made brainiac genius, you are full of fucking shit. Yeah, he You're is not self-made, he is not a genius. Right. I can tell you. I know I have friends who have worked at Tesla. I have a another friend who is a, a literal rocket scientist. At, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. An actual one, not an like a actual pretend one. No, that, no. Like, like an Elon actual voice. rocket scientist right. at mm -hmm. SpaceX. And I've heard stories from both of them where they have told me that here's the thing. Elon is good at absorbing like snippets of, of not like info, right? He can he can learn about something and discuss it to an extent. However, He's not a genius. He's not oh my God. incredibly you're, smart. You're blowing our minds that he's not a rocket scientist. Sorry, I guys. Re I really he's thought. Not. I really thought when he rode, when he gets his his space dildo in the space, yeah. I really thought that that meant that he was the actual one, like Tony Starking it, like he's building it in his yep. basement. And yeah, he's everyone designing wants him to be Iron Man, but he is not Iron Man. I know it's so disappointing. It's so disappointing. Yeah. Speaking so, of disappointment, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, so the last thing is says after Musk announced his stake, Twitter quickly offered him a seat on the board of a condition that he would be limited his purchase to no more than 14.9% of the company's outstanding <laughs> stock. But the company said five days later that Musk had declined. So this is when he initially uh, was given a board seat. Right. Because he doesn't actually want to do work. He doesn't want to. Yeah. He doesn't want right. to do the shit. He wanted to get in there and make the changes he want, whatever it might be. They know the he, want, they, they know he wants shit. to destroy Twitter. Right. They know it. They know exactly. it. the writings on the wall. Well, let, let's move to let's move to the story of the day. Oh. Um, here to Mark Meadows. Oh, Ugh. Kelly, thank you for the super thank sticker. You. 
thank you for the super sticker, Kelly. Let's move to the um, to the uh, story of the day, which is we, uh, a dishonorable mention here is Mark Meadows. And it really seems like Mark Meadows' phone was completely open. And I don't know if he was, like, advertising it out there on, like, uh, on like dating websites or something. But I he no was idea. receiving a ton, a yeah. ton of seditious sex messaging. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, it wasn't oh, just Mark. it wasn't just Don Jr. Yeah. Or, I mean, these people, he had a whole slew from uh, of Trumpers that were really, really, really into tearing yeah. down. And our when you say Trumpers, let's clarify. These are people it, close within the circle mm-hmm. or uh, within the, the Trump um, uh, kind of network, either right. representative senators or those within the actual White House. So. That's something that uh, that people need to know here is like it's not just like, oh, it was texted with some like Trump supporter. It was like, no, these are people with actual like voting power. Right. And and have actual influence in politics, which is. So who are who are these people? Because I want to bring this. uh, I'm going to bring this up here. So remember, we have today we we have have two people in the news other than Mark Meadows. Right. Right. So the original remember, the original text that came out during the January 6th committee um, was Mm -hmm. Sean Hannity, Laura Ingraham, uh, Don Jr., and um what's his face from uh from um from batman no i mean yeah. the joker is that who was no no from, <laughs> i mean who knows uh though i think the joke would be like uh dude not my style um, right <laughs> so so uh, oh the other one was uh what's his face from the um fox and friends yes. i forget his name yeah, yes. yeah. So those are the original. It was like, why? Why is Mark Meadows? Why does Mark Meadows have a direct line into these uh, entertainment correspondents? Let's call it what it is. Not news correspondents. Entertainment correspondents. Then, texts get announced that uh, there are ones between Mark Meadows and Ginny Thomas, and you're like, whoa, whoa, Ginny Thomas. That's the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. What is going on here? And we already know that. Well, she's, and not she's to an mention. Extremist. Not to mention, she's texting him QAnon stuff. Like this right. just wasn't like right. this wasn't just let's overturn the election. Like she was down deep inside the the QAnon base. Like she was reading oh, yeah. Facebook and just regurgitating oh, the she QAnon was, stuff. She was deep in that hole. That sounds so. Bad, which which really which really it. these texts that we're seeing today are kind of different from that, right? They're not the, right. uh, Mike Mike Lee Senator Mike Lee, which is kind of the focus here. But you wanted to also bring up Chip Roy, right? But Mike Chip Roy Lee's, threw himself into the batch as well, right? So so Mike Lee though, he's actually using a pragmatic approach to overthrow the government of the United States. Like right. he's really he's not using conspiracy theories as much. He actually is knocking conspiracy theorists like Sidney Powell, saying, "Oh, this is this is bad if we want to overturn this election." Sidney right. Powell and QAnon is really awful if we want to make sure we subvert the Constitution here. Right. Like, he's making that case to Mark Meadows. So Mark I, Meadows they, just wasn't receiving the QAnon theories. Right. He was receiving rebuttals like, hey, if you want to overthrow the government, right. we need to stop playing around with these QAnon theories. Like, right, right. It, it really just the is fact that, they, that it, was, it wasn't just like, hey, man, like, let's, let's just let the process work itself out. Let's not try to uh, uh, cause some sort of, like, block or or try to um to to prevent it from happening you know it it really was like yeah let's let's try to stop this fucker right uh because that's what was happening and here's here's one here it says from mike lee to mark meadows these are from cnn.com these are the text messages i'm sure gabe will be doing a uh, another text messages from uh, i just did one with don jr that was another one that came out where don jr was like We've got control. We own the states. Right. Trump's going to win. We can win. do whatever we want. And that was before thing. January 6th and before and after the election, too. Right. So here's from Mike Lee to Mark Meadows. We're sending this as a private communication from us to him through you. We are not issuing it as a press release. Um, and then uh, also use it however you deem appropriate. Like, however you want to overthrow the Constitution, yeah. just do that. You know, and it and here's it goes on. And if it's helpful to you for you to leak it, feel free to do so. Question mark. Mark Mendes is like, what? what? Wait a second. What? You want me to leak my text messages, this information? Um, and here's where he kind of starts knocking on Sidney Powell. Sidney Powell is saying that she needs to get in to see the president, but she's being kept away from him. Apparently, she has a strategy to keep things alive, but several states pay are back in play. Can you help get her in? So this is where he's kind of on her side. Right. But right. later on, after she does the press conference, let me find that spot. The press conference where Rudy Giuliani's hair starts leaking. 
Yes, and yeah. Sydney Powell starts talking craziness. Right. At that's the that's that is when everyone went fucking crazy for the Kraken. Right. Like, oh, the Kraken. And because the that's, Kraken that's is the biggest was, flop in human history. Right. Because that's what she was talking about: voting machines and Hugo Chavez right. and who had been dead oh, for years. Yeah, yeah. That right. was great. That was right. Great. So this is November nineteenth uh, after this press conference. Um, and this is from Lee to Meadows. I'm worried about the pal Chris. So he was for her talking to the president. Yeah, yeah. Now he's like, oh my God, she's a fucking crazy Was lunatic. this after? When was that conference? Was it after November 19th? I'm not real sure, but he says I'm worried. Well, you might check that. I'm worried yeah. about this press conference. Um, Mike Lee says potential defamation liability for president is significant here. Um, and that's because she was making pressing comments about Dominion and stuff that were not fucking true. And now we see a defamation suit against her and Rudy Giuliani and uh, Mike Lindell and others. Uh, but Mike Lee says for the campaign and for the president personally saying that this is significant and it's going to damage the campaign and the president personally. Right. Uh, in other words, Mike Lee seen this as a threat um, to their, you know, to so, their reputation. So going back to November 19th, he watched that press conference and then sent that text as it was happening. Oh, so so it this he's texting this to Mark Meadows. As the press conference was on right. November nineteenth, which means gotcha. he started watching. And he was like, "Oh shit, is off the rails." And right, he goes, and we don't have timestamps here, so it may have been right, right there or right after. Right, yeah, yeah. Because here's what's happening: they're making all these claims, and then obviously, uh, you know, this is all very still the nineteenth of November. Yeah, all this is the nineteenth. Yeah, yeah, okay, mm-hmm. yeah. So you know, I, I'm sure. Well, I mean, here, in, here, in, here, in, here, in, here, yeah. here, Mike Lee says, unless Powell can immediately substantiate what she said today, the president should probably disassociate himself. Which and he then did. Anything. That's right. So they were listening to Mike Lee here, which yeah. this is kind of crazy. And the reason why it's kind of crazy that they're listening to Mike Lee is because there was something else significant that I want to point out to you that is absolutely batshit crazy. And this is the reason why. Um, here's one um, about John Eastman. Uh, but I want to move to another one, but uh, why we're here, John Eastman has really interesting research on this. The good news is, is that Eastman is proposing an approach that unlike Sidney Powell has proposed could be examined very quickly. In other words, he's promoting the Cheeto dust kangaroo plan. Yeah. The John the, uh, Eastman is still doing that shit. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, which uh, he'll probably end up in federal prison for yeah. uh, for several years. Um, let's see. The one thing I wanted to show though that I found in these text messages, which scared the absolute fucking bejesus out of me. Um, I was like, holy actual fuck, is that they were they were crowd sourcing. We know the president of the United States, Donald Trump, at the time, right, was listening to Fox News, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But here is a United States senator. Let me see if I can find No text it. on on January 6th, which is very interesting. Right, right, right. Um but Oh, that's 20 that's 2020. Right, right. These right, are 2020. So, yeah. The um he was listening to Mark Levin and he's telling Mark Meadows to go watch Mark Levin's show on Fox News because Mark Levin lays it out on Fox News how we can overturn the constitution constitution of the united states it is some weird ass shit to see a text message from a sitting senator of the united states who you think well they're probably pretty smart right texting the chief of staff who stands in november 23rd 2020 is that one if you haven't watched tonight's episode of life liberty and levin then that's it that's it yeah that's it then is you it should, uh, yeah the 23rd yeah the, mm-hmm. it was right there above the ishman one yeah if you haven't watched Yet watch tonight's episode of Life, Liberty, and Levin. That's Mark Levin, a yeah. fucking piece of shit show on, on Fox News. You should do so if you can fit it in. Levin makes a very compelling case for the need to litigate re, uh, litigation related to this election. So, like, literally they're saying out loud, go listen to Fox News. Fox News has the roadmap right. that they're broadcasting. Yeah. Like, this is absolute batshit bonkers crazy. Folks... When you are in government and you are serious about policy and you are serious about what you're doing in government, you don't go watch a YouTube video that has QAnon conspiracy theories. Right. You do not go watch a cable news station like Joe Biden to figure out what litigation he needs to have. Doesn't go watch Rachel Maddow's show. I would seriously fucking doubt if Joe Biden even watches Rachel Maddow. Yeah. Yeah. I would seriously doubt that he watches Jake Tapper at if, all. If you if you are in a uh, political position, you're the president of the United States, let's say, or you're just a you know, you're a, a U.S. representative or senator. Um, 
and you are saying, hey, you should go listen to because it's not. Oh, let's just go. It's not Fox News. You know, it's faux news. It's Fox News. It's not really news. Fox it's an entertainment. News. It's Fox, Fox News. news. Uh, but in in that situation, if you are relying on the opinion of a person on a show who may have had someone do some research and maybe there's to some extent some truth to a path forward doesn't mean that it's actually a path it just means like oh there might be a case to actually present forward but it won't really hold any ground you know the fact that you would say oh the president should ignore uh his legal team or or the people working for him and you know what they didn't even think of this thing let's go over to mark levin and listen to this guy's show because he's got the answer well, if anyone doesn't know who Mark Levin is, because it's important to p- 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 point this out, he is a right-wing talk radio show host. That's what he is. He is like a Rush Limbaugh, and he was given a Fox News show because he's a fucking fascist. And this guy was vehemently anti-Trump when Trump wasn't the nominee in mm-hmm. 2016. I listened to Mark Levin a lot. I used to listen to Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity. I vehemently disagree with him, and I'm diametrically opposed to almost everything they believe. But I listened to him because I wanted to know what they were saying, because that's where these people were hearing it. And Mark Levin was anti-Trump because Trump is a buffoon. Mm-hmm. And, and fucking Mark Levin hated that about Trump, that he's a fucking buffoon. Now he's a Trump sycophant right. because the, the tail is wagging the dog in this country on the right wing. Yeah. That's what is happening. The fascists have taken over the party and they've taken it over. Um, did you want to say something about Chip Roy? Because the, the Chip yeah. Roy also... Right, so um, Chip Chip Roy is also one of uh, one of these people that threw themselves in the text uh, and, and you know texting Mark Meadows to again figure out you know he's got stuff that's like we have no tools, data, information to go out and fight for the election fraud. If you know if you need Juana, we all need to know what's going on for what it's worth. So he's like not part of the conversation. Uh, again, has no has no position to be in to to involve himself mm-hmm. but is now trying to be like oh how do i kiss this ass right how do i how do i fucking uh uh get get trump's attention so that he knows that i am a loyal loyal servant to him you know and uh you know then there's like oh mark meadows and chip roy thanks so much working on it for the surrogates briefing congratulations by the way he goes yes sir now let's hold uh georgia and take arizona and pennsylvania like they're all talking about this stuff, you know, behind the scenes and well, and, 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 well, and they're even talking about how they're on the phone with state legislators day in and day out to try to overturn right. this election. Exactly. Like Chip Roy comes in no more than a kiss ass. He's just brown nosing at this point. In my opinion, he put himself in the situation or in the discussion with Mark Meadows so that when, you know, push comes to shove at the end of the day, if Trump does come through, he looks at all the loyalists that were with him during that time and says, you stay, you stay, you stay, you stay. And by that, I mean, like, my word, Trump's word, which is means shit in terms of, like, what he promises. I think that is that is Trump's attempt to say, like, oh, those who are loyal to me will have my undying support and, uh, and admiration, right? Uh, which we've seen go to the wayside with people like uh, Mo Brooks, right? Who was very much for January 6th, pushing and fighting, uh and and disagreeing with the certification and then now that he recently was like oh i actually told trump well, not I, to I, do this i think he i think he got interviewed by federal prosecutors right and they're like listen this is what you're actually looking at and before right. i think a lot of these people also are are under the the guise or the the kind of uh idea that they're not going to be in any way held liable for what was said or done and the federal prosecutors come in. They're like, "Listen, so we got uh, communication on this, 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 this. You were here on these dates. You said these things. We can connect you to these people. Whether you were directly involved, you were indirectly involved because of some sort of an, something you did." And they're like, "So these are the charges, realistic, that we can bring against you." And then uh, he's like, "Uh, okay, right. okay, 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 okay." Um, so what I really meant to say was, uh, you know, and then goes in and, and then you know speaks out now these people have to be publicly against trump and anything he was trying to do for january 6th and now trump says oh those fucking rat fucks and then comes after them to say that oh i don't trust them i endorse the opposing candidate if they're in a re-election campaign uh it's like you know again 
just like Comey said, like you're, he's always asking for loyalty. And if you're not proving to be loyal to him, then he will cut you as soon as he can. Right. And well, yeah. And I'll tell you that there is speaking of uh, sycophants trying to placate to Trump. Uh, our bonehead of the week is one of those. Um, the winner of our bonehead of the week is Governor Greg Abbott. And boy, is he really is he really uh, sucking at the teeth of the Trump supporters here. He goes to events and says, uh, God hail Trump. And they're like booing him and shit. But um, I got a video here that I want to show that was posted by his opponent. Um, well, maybe his opponent in the uh, Texas race for governor, Beto O'Rourke. Um, this is a, a line of, of trucks. Let me mute it here. This is the line of trucks that's waiting um, to be inspected by the Ohio Patrol. They're going to check the tire pressure on these trucks because they can't check the cargo. Uh, as everyone knows, Governor Greg Abbott is really trying to make sure that your grocery store shelves are empty. He's old, empty shelves, Abbott. Uh, and the reason why is because he wants to try to step right. up the supply chain on purpose. So that way it gets blamed on Joe Biden. So when you right. go vote, you'll blame Joe Biden, you'll b blame Beto O'Rourke, and you'll vote for him. So he's right. using his power as governor to get the Texas, what is essentially the higher patrol in Texas, to stop up the supply chain at our border where we get a lot of food, right. a lot of electronics, a lot of vehicles that is manufactured, grown, and brought here from Mexico – um, and, and which our country relies on for those shelves that you complain about being empty at, yeah. you know, like Tiffany's the, you know, there's no, right. Right. It's know. almost, you know, I, I look at this <laughs> and I'm like, wow, this is a pretty effective truck convoy. Right. I almost right. feel like Greg Abbott should have been the one behind planning the truck yeah, convoy to actually no stop them. That is true. That is true. Because you look at this and it's like, you've got, wow tons of freight containers and, and, and trailers right. on these trucks spoiling food. right spoiling. well you know the other thing too is these truckers aren't interested in being in a convoy they want to move their wheels right and they want to go to their destination to now i, I also don't know the situation here in terms of like if anyone out there knows anything about like being a trucker or the trucking industry what happens in this scenario you you literally cannot move you're just sitting in the truck so are these people getting paid plus overtime from the trucking companies because the, like they're stuck. They're technically like they they cannot prevent it. They're they're late and and uh, overdue on delivery because of a uh, you know federal bureaucracy and and uh, Abbott trying to do something that's completely idiotic. But when I look at that, I say like, oh well, these truckers they can't they have no control. They cannot go through. They're being stopped. So are they getting paid? Are they not getting paid? You know, uh, like maybe they're getting paid if, in like if the I'm wheels if the wheels aren't moving. They're not getting paid. Most truckers in this country get paid per mile. Right. So, so okay. that's why that's why when you see a truck. So why are the, why is this like this? Should, like, if there was ever a trucker convoy to like go against anything, why wouldn't it be this? Right. Like, I look at the situation. I say this is this is complete bullshit. Where a governor is using his power to to play around with uh, with holding supply chain going into the country, and the truckers are just like. Well, uh, I guess I'll just sit in my truck. Like, what are they doing, right? Like, I don't know why there's not some sort of, like, uh, protest to this. Well, you know, I'll tell you that uh, a lot of the trucking industry in this country, uh, unbeknownst to a lot of people, most of the truck drivers, a very high percentage of the truck drivers in this country, uh, whether people like it or know it or not, a, lo a lot of them are rural people, right? Mm -hmm. But a big high percentage of truck drivers in this country are, are immigrants. Mm -hmm. They're immigrants. Um, and the reason why is because it is... A, a you do you have to have a high skill in truck driving, but it does, does not require a lot of money, a lot of resources to drive for a big trucking company. And you can generally make a very good income in this country uh, driving a truck because you get to drive so many miles. Now, there's different regulations like between this point and that point and this. But you generally get a very good income for your household by driving a truck, which you have to have a high skill but right. you don't have to have a lot of money in education and, and, and background and experience. You just have so, to have the skill of driving a truck. So uh, Margie said here, mm -hmm. uh, she's like, hey, Tony, he changed it. So now he is having the Mexican government do it so he can't be blamed. Right. Well, uh, I mean, I mean, he's still doing it. So right, I mean, right. we're still going to blame him. Yeah, yeah, we're still going to blame him. It, yeah. I mean, obviously, like it will come down to semantics because like, well, I'm not doing it. Right. They are right. actually inspecting. Right. Now, it's at the request of Greg Abbott. So now he's using uh, well, Mexico's I, I, taxpayer money. Right. Here's what I'll tell you, Margie. Here's what I'll tell you, Margie. 
if 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 there's not a better sign that Greg Abbott knows he's going to be blamed for this and he's not and he's not getting the blame pushed on the right person, it's because Better O'Rourke is actually doing his job and running right. the campaign against him. But here's the thing: is him pushing it to the Mexican government only tells me that he knows it's very fucking unpopular and it's not a popular thing to do, and he will get blamed for it, and he doesn't want to be blamed for it, which is why we should blame him for it and keep pressing him. Um, so let's do this. Let's give Greg Abbott his due of the week. We are over time, mm-hmm. but let's give Greg Abbott his due of the week here. Thank fuck you, Greg Rick. Abbott. Yeah, fuck him. Fuck. Because I also want to point out one yeah, other thing that really ahead. pisses mm-hmm. me off. Um, the guy straight up kidnapped and trafficked people and sent them to D.C. Right. Many of them are saying, one, some of them aren't even illegal, right? They're not like that's one thing that's uh, that I was thinking about the other day where I was like, oh, you know, God forbid somebody is just assumed to be illegal or not a resident of the U.S. because of how mm-hmm. they look. Right. I have a draft in my tweets that I did not even send out, but I was like, oh, I guarantee that there's probably going to be some people that come forward or reveal that Greg Abbott just goes, you look brown, you look Mexican, you're on the you're bus, out, right? You're out. But the other thing is there were reports of people saying that they were going to Florida, right? They're going to be deported to Florida outside of Texas. But really what ends up happening is they get pumped up and shipped out to, to New York or to DC and, uh, uh, they were just openly admitting, they're like, oh, yeah, we took people against their will. We took them to a place that uh, that they didn't agree to or they weren't aware of. We trafficked people, you know, across state lines. We kidnapped them against their uh, against their their will, you know. And then obviously people on the right are going to be like, oh, well, they're illegal or they're not residents. Right. They, don't blah, blah, God, yeah. they, they don't have God. They don't have God given rights. Right. Yeah, yeah. They don't have God given rights. It, it's This is all ridiculous. And, there, and there, I talked about this earlier in the show on the statistic that there's five million more jobs than we have unemployed people in this country. And the reason why, and Rachel pointed out very clearly that we, we so have demonized migrants and immigrants in this country, migrants and immigrants in this country play such a vital role into getting food on our fucking tables that people do not understand it. And it is very important that we fill a lot of those positions. So when you go to your restaurant, when you go and you see shortages where they're, they're having to close down early or they can't, Guys, it's because because the Republican Party is demonizing immigration. Yeah. They're demonizing immigrants. They're demonizing migrants to come to our country and to work here. They are part of our workforce, whether you fucking like it or not. They are part of our workforce. They're vital to our country, whether they're legal or illegal, whatever the hell you want to say. They are vital to our economy and they're vital to our country. So great point on that. Um, fuck Greg Abbott. Yeah. Fuck him. Uh, because then, as the as the as the the son of an immigrant to this country, I'm Mexican American, and this shit is 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 disgusting. And the fact that it was kind of like, well, whatever, you know, you know, they pushed him up there, and it was some political move in terms of for Greg Abbott to like make a point that it's Joe Biden's border problem. Well, you know, the fact that we're just okay, and there's seems to be no repercussions for the fact that Greg Abbott is just trafficking people or, or, or kidnapping them against their will and what they were told they were going to go, uh, where they were going to go versus where they actually went is insane. And of course the group on the right, you know, GQP, right wing extremists, whatever you want to call them, look at that and they go, yeah, well they had it coming. Like what the fuck is that bullshit? Well, so they're, you know. they're, they're Brown. So who cares? Right. right. That, I mean, that's, that's, that's really what it is. Right. Right. And, and it's racism is what yeah. it is. Let's just call it the way it is. So fuck Greg Abbott. Fuck him. And I'm glad he's the bone of the week. Thank you. Remember, go to at Tony Michaels pod to vote every single week in bone of the week. And then every Friday in the second hour of the Tony Michaels broadcast, me and Gabe break down your vote, your vote for bone of the week. Thanks for joining us. Stick around. We'll be right back after the song. 